Um, I'm always in awe as I look out into the audience and think about the great potential that we have in our nation to be a linguistically rich nation. But then I'm also saddened by the fact that we often treat uh, our linguistic diversity as more of a problem to be solved than a resource to be tapped into. The American Community Survey 2016 has found that we speak over 350 languages on a daily basis in homes across the nation. That 80% of our popula total population identify themselves as English only speakers. Now this isn't surprising given that a lot of the immigrant families by the third generation transform completely into monolingual uh, English monolingual speakers. And in some ethnic communities, the uh, attrition is even faster. And so by the second generation, the transformation is complete. Now this push for English, English and only English has affected over 18 million children of immigrants in our nation today. These children grow up in a very natural environment to develop their bilingual competence, yet many of them are so focused on English language education that they lose this uh, ability to do so. Uh, research after research or studies after studies have shown that by the time students enter kindergarten they're in, and they start schooling in the U.S., their heritage language or their primary language is often replaced by the proficiency in English. So my research focuses on um, how to maintain and develop bilingual competencies among children of immigrants. So for over three years, I followed a group of 30 uh, immigrant children into their homes, into their communities, into their schools, to figure out how their context shapes their language uh, capacity and their language abilities. And what we found was that students that have been well supported either through their schooling, because they were attending dual language immersion programs, or through their family resources, um, were at the end, so we, I've tracked these students for over 10 years. At the end, they were much more successful academically and socially in comparison to those students who were not able to develop those bilingual skills. So if we know that um, bilingual education or certain types of bilingual education work well, why is it that we are not able to implement these practices in our schools? Well, one of the greatest challenges that we have is in uh, countering these deeply ingrained societal beliefs about how languages are learned and um, how by, and about uh, perceptions about bilingualism or and bilingual education. So, how many of you have heard of this? Total immersion in English leads to faster English acquisition. This has been the premise of Proposition 227 that has banned bilingual education in our public schools for the past two decades. We know for a fact that total immersion in a classroom where the students can't understand a language doesn't work. And actually, primary language support that facilitates comprehension is actually a way to better teach language. And we also know that language skills transfer. And so the stronger the primary language foundation is, the easier the second languages are learned. How many of you have heard this? Parents should stop speaking their native language at home to their children because it causes confusion, it causes, it causes English delay, acquisition delay. Because of this focus on language, we often forget that these children aren't only English language learners, they're developing children. Parents need to be able to communicate with their children and develop special deep relationships and provide rich language input, regardless of the language. And if teachers and speech therapists and administrators are telling their parents not to speak in a language that they're comfortable in, just imagine the limited kinds of interactions that they would have at home. What about this? Bilingual education holds children behind academically, or basically it just doesn't work. Well, the problem here is bilingual education is an umbrella term for a lot of different things. Okay. But what we do know for a fact is that students in enrichment tech bilingual programs like dual language immersion schools, basically after four to five years in that program, outperform their monolingual counterparts, both academically and in their language skills. So for those of you, uh, and dual language immersion, might I add, is one of the fastest growing 
um, educational models across the nation. And for those of you who are familiar with dual language immersion, also known as two-way immersion programs, the goals are threefold. So they want to develop bilingualism, biliteracy proficiency, achieve high standards in academic achievement, and also develop positive intercultural and multicultural skills among their students. Now the innovation here is that uh, the student population is ideally 50% language dominant, or in our case, English speakers, and 50% in, uh, in another language. It could be Spanish, Korean, Chinese, uh, you name it. And uh, both language, uh, so both languages are used as a medium for instruction, and content and language are integrated, and so in a non-repetitive manner. And so there are two basic models of um, dual language immersion programs. One's 50-50, where from kindergarten, 50% of the time students are instructed in English, 50% of the time they're instructed in Spanish or whatever language that they're learning. Or 90-10 models, where uh, in kindergarten they start off with a minority language 90% of the time, and then uh, they move up until they get to fifth grade, where it turns out to be 50-50. So why is this model so popular? Well, I think what we're seeing now, after decades of research, is that it's bilingual education in this form isn't just about developing proficiency in two languages. Actually, the benefits are way more than just language proficiency. We're seeing cognitive benefits among bilinguals, enhanced memory, uh, attention span, faster information processing skills. We're seeing students that have graduated from these programs with higher GPA, test scores, lower dropout rates, greater education on career aspirations in comparison to their monolingual uh, mono counterparts. We're also seeing social psychological benefits such as stronger sense of ethnic and bicultural identity, higher self-esteem, stronger family relationship and communication skills. And societally, they're really contributing to a much needed multicultural, multilingual workforce. So whether um, we think about ways in which we can create foreign language or bring foreign language to the forefront as a part of the core curriculum of um, schools, or think about how we can better integrate heritage language programs, which are often just individually run by ethnic communities, into uh, our formal educational system, or how we can better support and raise awareness of dual language immersion programs, I hope and I invite you to join me in thinking about and talking about how we can create a society that makes multilingualism a resource and a norm. So thank you very much.